Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about normal distributions and how to use a Z table. In the previous video, we saw that if we have a normal distribution, we can use the empirical rule to answer questions that involve regions that are one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. But there are an infinite number of other possible z-scores that could occur besides a z-score of one, two, three, or negative one, two, or three. We could have half, or we could have three quarters, or 1.62. Anything is possible. So for all other z-scores, we're going to refer to the, the table of z-scores. The table of z-scores gives the fraction of all scores in a normal distribution that lie between the mean and z standard deviations from the mean. The table of z-scores looks like this, and in the upper left corner, corner you'll see the diagram for the standard normal distribution with zero, the z-score zero in the middle, and then the symbol z here indicating some other positive z-score. And what this table gives you, if you look up that z-score, is the area between zero and that z-score. And remember, under the standard normal curve, that area is not only an area, it's also the probability that a data value will be between zero and z standard deviations away from the mean, and it's also the percentage of data that lie in that interval. This is the type of z-score table we'll use in our class. Now, if you watch other YouTube videos, they're gonna show you that there are lots of other formats for z-score tables, but this is the one that's in our textbook. So suppose that we were given a z-score of 0.62. If we look that up on the table, then in the column to the right of that z-score, we'll see a corresponding area of 0.232. This means that the area under the normal curve between z equals zero and z equals 0.62 is 0.232. Now, because of the symmetry of the standard normal curve, the table can actually be used for values that are either above or below the mean. In other words, you could have a negative z-score say z equals negative 0.62, and you can still look up 0.62 on your table, and we still know that this area is going to be 0.232. So let's look at this example. We're gonna use the table to find the percent of all scores that lie between the mean and the following values. Part A, 1.5 standard deviations above the mean, and part B, 2.62 standard deviations below the mean. Now it's going to be very important that you always draw the picture of your standard normal curve because the problems will get more complicated and you will need to refer to the diagram to know what operations to do. So in part A, we're looking for a, um, for the area under the curve between a z-score of zero and a z-score of positive 1.5. I know it's positive because it's above the mean. This is what that diagram would look like. You would draw in your bell-shaped curve and your number line beneath with a zero in the middle, and then you're gonna put z equals 1.5 and shade in between. What do you think the diagram would look like for the area between the mean and 2.62 standard deviations below the mean? You can pause the video and try and jot down a diagram to test yourself. What you should have drawn is the standard bell curve with zero in the middle, and since we're looking at 2.62 standard deviations below the mean, the z-score would be to the left of zero and be negative 2.62. So these are the two diagrams we would use to solve this problem. So let's go ahead now and refer to the table of values. If you haven't done so already, you should print out the standard z-score table from your textbook or pull it up on another screen. So for part A, we're looking for the area between the mean and 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. This is the diagram. Looking up the z-score of 1.5 on our z-score table, we're gonna find 1.5 in the z column, and then to the right of that, 
we're going to look for the corresponding area. You should see 0.433. What that tells us is that 43.3% of all values lie between the mean and 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. It also tells us that the area between 0 and 1.5 is 0.433. Remember, our z-table always gives us the area between the z-score of 0 and the z-score we're given. Now let's do part B. Part B, looking for the area between the mean and 2.62 standard deviations below the mean. Remember the diagram looked like this. But because of the symmetry of the standard normal curve, we can look up positive 2.62 on the table. Looking at 2.62 in the Z column, we look to the right to see that it corresponds to an area of 0.496. The area that we're looking for is 0.496, which also means that 49.6% of all the values, the data values, lie between the mean and 2.62 standard deviations below the mean. Now let's look at this example where we're given the diagram. We won't always be given the diagram. We often have to draw it for ourselves. But in this case, we're given the diagram and asked to find the total area indicated in the region in color, which that should just say shaded below. So we're looking for an area between a negative z-score, negative 1.7, and a positive z-score, z equals 2.55. You're always going to look up the z-scores and find the corresponding areas, but then you're going to use the diagram to figure out what to do with those areas. If you look up z equals 2.55 on your standard normal table, you should see that to the right of that you get 0.495. As you're watching this video, it's important that you look at the table and check to see that you can find these values. If you look up z equals 1.7, remember there are no negative z-scores, but because of symmetry we can look up the positive uh, version. If you look up z equals 1.7, you get an area of 0.455. Now what do these represent on our diagram? Well remember, each of these is the area between 0 and the given z-score. So the area between 0 and 2.55 is 0.495. And the area between 0 and negative 1.7 is 0.455. And we want the total area, which means that we're going to have to add those two values together. 0.495 plus 0.455 is 0.950. That's the total area in the shaded region. It also indicates that 95% of the data values are going to lie between negative 1.7 standard deviations and 2.55 standard deviations. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.